Hey what's up guys, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be taking you down a journey with XQC. I'll be talking about the following, XQC's professional Overwatch career, my experiences with him, his rise to fame, and if he should be in the Overwatch League or is he even good enough to be in the Overwatch League. Also, before I start, just remember I don't have any animosity towards XQC. I'm going to be completely objective in this video and give my honest thoughts about him. Alright, let's jump right into it. First, we're going to be talking about XQC's career. XQC's career has been full of ups and downs. He's been to the top, and he's been to the bottom. He started his career off like many in the Gosu Gamer Weeklies. He played with a team called Q Question Mark, whose roster was XQC, ZZA, Dahoon, Jolson, Endless, and Godhand. They would end up losing early on in these tournaments, so they were never really able to find much success. Although they weren't playing that well in these weeklies, they were still able to sign a deal with Denali Esports. This would end up landing them invites to major tournaments with Tier 1 teams and organizations. They would compete in the MGA Qualifier, the October Alien Monthly Melee, and the November Carbon Masters. Unfortunately for them though, they would lose every single game, going a combined 0 and 6 in matches. Losing against teams like FaZe, Immortals, Team Liquid, Rise, and Method. After not doing so hot against these really good teams, they would then decide to try their luck in the Tier 2 scene, competing in the AG Weeklies and Rivalcades. This is where the rivalry between XQC's team and my team started, but they would end up not finding success in the Tier 2 scene either. They would end up losing multiple tournaments in a row, placing 5th through 8th, losing to teams like Kungarna, Doot Doot, and Selfless. It wasn't until they picked up Dante though, and started utilizing his strong Sombra play, along with ZZA's strong Farah play. This would allow Denial to slowly improve and start performing much better. They would eventually end up winning a couple Rivalcades in a row, and then they placed 3rd in the April Monthly Melee, losing only to Selfless, 1-3, in extremely close games. After this April Melee, the team would drop Denial and rebrand into Yikes. They would also end up dropping Jolson, moving Dante to main DPS, and putting space on off tank. They would go on to win the May Monthly Melee, where they smashed Selfless in the finals, and what many could consider the downfall of Selfless and Defran. This would be their peak though, as they'd go into the Rumble May Monthly only three days later, and end up losing early on to teams like Kungarna and Renegades. It wouldn't get better either. They would end up competing in the Contenders Season 0 and fail to qualify over FNRGFE and Immortals. After this, the team would only end up playing one last tournament together, the Beat Inventational, where they had a decent showing, placing third after losing to Immortals. After this tournament though, the players decided to part ways and pursue Overwatch League opportunities. In the meantime, XUC was also selected for the Canadian World Cup team and qualified for the BlizzCon Final 8. With XQC having a really strong performance with his team over the summer and being part of Team Canada, he was able to land Overwatch League trials pretty easily. After trialing for some time and with multiple teams, XQC was finally announced on October 28th to be signing with Dallas Fuel for the first season of the Overwatch League. After this, he would also go on to compete at BlizzCon in the World Cup, representing Fuel and Canada. He ended up taking second place and the T-Mobile MVP award. And of course, he most recently played in the preseason with Dallas Fuel. He would end up competing in four of the nine maps that Dallas Fuel played in, and his team ended up going two and zero. Okay, now that I've gone over all his professional history, I wanna go over a little bit of who he is, my personal experiences with him, and his rise to fame. I'm sure everyone knows who XQC is by now, but not many people know how he started. I want to provide my perspective from inside the pro player community that many in the public might not know. Before I get into this part though, I want to say that XQC is an extremely passionate player and one unique individual. His streams are very entertaining and he has done a lot for our community. Again, I'm just going to be objective here and go off my personal experience. So here we go. XQC, just like me, is a very outspoken person. He is never afraid to say what he believes in or what he thinks about someone or a team. Because of this, early on in the scene, he came off as arrogant and just straight up sounded like a jerk. He would often pick fights with people in the pro player discord, calling out other main tanks who played for better teams than his at the time, and claiming that they got carried and didn't deserve to be on their team. Now personally, 
I didn't have any problem with this. Because he was just making a name for himself, and I respect that. But sometimes he would take it too far, and specifically when it was about me or my team. I mentioned earlier that we had a rivalry. Now I'm going to go into that, and how all the beef started. It was when Denial went to the Tier 2 scene, back in November of 2016. At the time, XQC didn't know who I was, or who Kangarna was. And I found this a little insulting, because we had been tearing up the Tier 2 scene for a couple weeks at the time. We had won a few AG weeklies in a row, and a couple rival caves in a row. So naturally, because we were both polarizing personalities, we clashed right away. We ended up talking a lot of trash back and forth, leading up to our match in the Rivalcade Weekly. My team would end up beating his in the finals, 2-1. to one. After this tournament, we would go up against them again in the next AG Weekly, where we easily beat them 2-0. to zero. After this match, we wouldn't play them again, as Kagarna would go on to be an extremely successful team in December through January, qualifying for the Winter Premier LAN event at PAX South. Denial would end up not having much success at all though. As I mentioned up top, they would end up slumping and continuing to lose in the tier 2 scene for a couple months. During our winter premiere run, XQC started accusing me and Baby Bay of cheating. These accusations would last nearly 9 months and all the way up to Contenders Season 0. For this, at the time, I lost all respect for XQC. It was fine to trash talk and have fun going back and forth, but to purposely try to slander me and my teammates integrity and ruin our careers was sad. You can pause the video and look at all these Discord messages from ProTalk throughout late 2016 and mid 2017. He definitely had a vendetta against me and some of my teammates and I just couldn't stand him at the time for it. The accusations he was making were just completely unneeded and out of line. There wasn't much I could do though, but try to ignore it. We ended up not running into each other much for a few months as I went to join Splice and he stayed with Denial. We just didn't have the opportunity to play against each other. In May, he started to gain popularity though, because his team was performing really well in the monthly melees, and his stream started to get more notice and help by big streamers like Tim the Tatman, Kefri, and some others. He definitely earned all of this though. His team had become one of the best in NA, he was also playing really good, and his stream was entertaining as hell. And then around the end of that month, he would go on and win the May monthly melee against Selfless, where again, many could say was the downfall of Selfless and Defran. This wouldn't be the only tournament in May that they would compete in though. About three days fresh off of the monthly melee, the May monthly rumble would happen. And guess who was back? Kungarna. And of course, we were to face off against XQC's team, Yikes, at the time. And of course, because egos were high, I had an ego, I hadn't lost to XQC, and obviously XQC's team coming fresh off the win in the monthly melee, their egos were at a high too. So again, we clashed, and this time... We would have heavy banter for three days straight till we faced off. He constantly called us cheaters by saying stuff like, we are garbage and scrims and we'll have to hit the switch to do relatively good in the tournament. Here you can see some more screenshots of the things he was saying at this time. But, once again, his team would lose to mine. Kagarna came out on top. Of course, after the match though, he had nothing good to say once again. He would continue to call us cheaters, he would continue to accusate us, trying to tarnish our reputation and question our integrity of the game. Fortunately though, nothing he said would ever stick, and it really didn't affect any of our chances at making the Overwatch League. But, it's still the fact that he tried to ruin our reputation with these terrible accusations. I mean, he would literally talk about how he had proof and contact with Blizzard, and we were going to face the consequences. A couple weeks later, we would end up running into him and his team again, in the Season 0 Overwatch Contenders Qualifiers, where we handily beat them again. He would continue on his rampage of calling us cheaters and accusating us. And that would be the last I ever competed against XQC. My team would go on to compete in contenders, and he would move on and focus on the World Cup and Overwatch League trials. Sure, I may sound like I'm a little bit jealous or upset because he has a huge following and is in the Overwatch League now, and I'm not, but I'm literally just giving information about what happened between me and him. His rise to fame was definitely deserved, I mean seriously. Who can watch a stream for more than 5 minutes without being entertained? I mean, it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. He's an entertaining guy. It's easy to tell that he has given Overwatch his all and he loves the game. He's honestly one of the most passionate players in the entire scene. Mixing his passion with a lot of his emotion leads to great content and a good player. At the end of the day, I have some amazing memories trash talking with XQC and playing against his teams. 
It was super fun. All those games were hype as hell, and I loved them for what they were. I've never taken anything too serious when it comes to this game and what people say about me, and I appreciate what XQC brings to this game in the community. He may have said some messed up stuff, but let's be honest guys, who hasn't in their past? Now that I've gone over XQC's pro career, my personal experiences with him, and his rise to fame, I will now answer the questions you guys are all waiting for. Should he be in the Overwatch League, and is he even good enough to be in the league? First. I'll start off with, should he be in the league? This question lies within XQC, guys. The path he has been on recently is showing that he shouldn't be. Not because he's bad or anything, I'm going solely based off his own words and actions. Mentally, XQC doesn't seem to be in the right spot. Lately, it seems kind of like he doesn't care for playing in the Overwatch League, or is at least possibly very upset with something internally that he can't discuss. He's been saying weird things on stream like, it's all a scam, I feel so scammed, or playing in the Overwatch League is meh, and I might not be playing in the Overwatch League much because the consequences are coming for my ban. It's okay though, I can stream more, I care, but it's whatever. It definitely seems like he might be going through some stuff lately. Saying things like that, along with throwing games with a bunch of Overwatch League players in it on stream, seems like something no one would have the balls to do. I think XQC might want out of whatever he signed up for and would prefer to focus on his stream and growing his following. Whether that's true or not though, XQC needs to either find a balance between Overwatch League and his stream or at least pick one because the path he is on now is just hurting him in multiple ways. So this leads me back to the start of my question of whether he should be in the league because it's ultimately up to him to decide on what he wants to do. Now for the last question to be answered, and the one that you guys might be wondering. Michael, is he good enough to even be in the Overwatch League? Well guys, he is 100% good enough to be in the league. And from what I know, he was brought into Dallas Fuel to learn under Coco and slowly take over the reins as the full-time main tank. I'm not entirely sure this is true, but it is a rumor that is floating around. And it would make sense since Coco is getting older and XQC is entering his prime. With XQC's passion and grinding mentality, he is capable of even being one of the best main tanks in the entire league. But this is if he is fully focused on his team and the league. If he continues to try to balance full time streaming while competing in the league, he is only going to continue hurting himself and he won't last very long. So once again, it comes down to what XQC wants to do. He needs to figure out what he wants guys. Personally, I would love to see him in the Overwatch League. And I would love to continue seeing his streams. I really think he needs to find a balance between streaming and playing professionally. Similarly to how Siegel is doing it or some of the other players in the league. What do you guys think? What do you want to see him do? What do you want to see XQC do guys? Be sure to leave a comment down below. Let's start a discussion. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Because the next one's also going to be banger. We're going to be discussing whether Defran is good enough to be in the Overwatch League or should he be in the Overwatch League.